Simple Cyber Defense Weekly Updates for July 30th, 2021. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense Podcast. This week we have some interesting topics. We are discussing the Wi-Fi crash bug and the Facebook and phone numbers exposed. So, my name is Carl, joined with... And we're going to get started right now. Okay, so earlier this year... There was a researcher who was messing around with a bunch of iPhones and he noticed that if he set his uh, SSID, which is kind of like the uh, name of your internet, Wi-Fi internet, if you uh, created it in such a way that the iPhone will, would automatically crash and freeze up. So that format that he did was percent %p percent %s percent %s percent %s percent %s percent %n What was really bad about this is nothing would fix this. He tried rebooting his phone, he tried connecting to a different Wi-Fi network, but no matter what he did, it just kept crashing and didn't work. So what he ended up having to do was he had to flush his network settings, which is being done by going into the settings, general, reset, and reset network settings. What this did was basically deleted every single Wi-Fi he connected to ever. And everyone thought, okay, good. So this issue has is just more of an annoyance. And the reason why this worked was because the percent character is an object in Objective C. Objective C is the programming that's used to create the iOS platform. And these objects that use the percent sign can either declare a variable name or a command. So this percent P is like a print command almost and it's and the percent s's and percent n's are telling the iPhone to go to this particular place and print out these commands but unfortunately the iPhone can never find these directories because they don't exist so it's in the endless loop of trying to find those directories and it just hits a wall and crashes starts up again okay got the command again hits the wall crashes Now, everyone thought that this was just, you know, more of an annoyance, but a few weeks later, it turned out that this could actually be used more maliciously. So, an attacker can use a different type of SSID name in order to create a malicious access point, so that once your iPhone connects to it, it will down it'll start downloading malware onto the iPhone. And since it's using the Objective C program, the same program that is inside the iOS, the iPhone would just think, oh, these are just commands from the operating system, so I can just run the commands as it's being presented to me. And depending on what the attacker wants to do, he could either spy on you, steal any data he wants from you, from these simple meaning or looking meaningless commands that people don't, may not understand what they are they think oh this is free wi-fi okay and connect to it and then all of a sudden boom their iphone is attacked luckily apple has released a patch for this particular uh, hack that the actors actually or the attackers have actually been using in the wild and 
the patch is in the 14.6 version of iOS. Right now, the current version is 14.7.1. So the best way to prevent this from happening is just update your iOS to the latest version. And that will stop these SSIDs using the, the Objective-C programming language in their uh, Wi-Fi names to be able to attack your iPhone or iPad or any other iOS device. Now if you have a, a de, an iOS device that does not or cannot get updated to four, four, at least 14.6, I'd probably consider I'd probably consider replacing that as, if you can or if you can't replace it just be very careful not to connect to any Wi-Fi connections that have percents in them at all because if you can't patch it then you're going to be vulnerable and there's going to be a lot of iOS devices because they're so expensive that people are like I know I'm only I'm not at up to date but I really can't afford to get a new one because they're like really <laughs> high in price so if you're in that situation the best thing to do is just be very careful what Wi-Fi connections you connect to. If you see a percent sign in it, do not connect to it at all. Now, Carl, you mentioned that this this uh, was used out in the wild, uh, yeah. but earlier you mentioned that a security researcher kind of discovered it. Did he, did he discover the actual He discovered code? it. Yeah, he discovered it and did a publish on it, and then Apple did an initial patch, but it didn't patch the malicious side of it that people didn't realize was malicious until a couple months after he, re he put his research paper out there and then the attackers like oh, okay so what if we do this and they realize oh we can actually inject malicious payloads in here because the iPhone thinks oh these are just the operating systems giving me commands because it's the same language that's used in the iPhone Right. Yeah. You know, it shows how important it is, you know, to keep our devices updated. Just yeah. turn auto update on. And yeah, just update. And if you can't update all the way, either replace the phone or find other ways to make it more secure. Yeah. All right. So are you ready to get on to the uh, Facebook yeah. and the phone yeah, leakage? So, uh, yeah, so TechCrunch uh, reported that there is 419 million Facebook user phone numbers publicly exposed. Um, saying that there's an unsecure server exposed 419 uh, million phone numbers belonging to Facebook users. Also, in some information, uh, this information is actually found in a database that was not secured by a password. So now we see right here immediately it is human error. And it's something that as a user, you really don't have any control over. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it said that, you know, what he said is that each record held uh, an individual's Facebook ID. And a Facebook ID is something that, in, that identifies you. It's usually in the URL. Mm -hmm. um, and that number connected to the person's phone number and some of them connected to the person's name and gender and location. Uh, after this was discovered, you know, that server was taken was taken offline. Uh, this is the first type of attack on Facebook since 2018. Okay, they said that up until 2018, Facebook gave uh, phone number access to developers and they don't do that anymore. Um, so, and what Facebook, Facebook was contacted about that and they say that they're, you know, they haven't seen any indication that the user accounts have been compromised. One of the things that we need to understand is that if you were one of those people whose number was exposed, there's something that's called uh, uh, SIM swapping, and and we all know about spam calls. If yeah. that number is leaked, that the least thing that can happen is they can it can be sold to somebody, and they can do spam calls all day. And we know how annoying that is. Um, then you'd have to invest in you know a caller ID and number blocking service, etc. It's a cost that you'd have to, you know, incur if you want to keep that same phone number. Uh, the second problem, which is which is uh, uh, SIM swapping, uh, and 
it's also known as a poured out scam or a SIM splitting um, mm -hmm. type of an account takeover. Uh, it's a fraud that usually also handles like the, the weak targets that the weakness of two factor authentication. If somebody has access to your phone, then they can use the two factor authentication that you have set up on other services to gain access to it through your phone. Now that they have swap the, the way, the way, the method of, uh, swim swap, SIM swapping is like this. Uh, it, it kind of, we know how easy it is for a user to transfer service to another SIM card. You call your provider and you say, Hey, this is so-and-so. I lost my phone number my, or I lost my phone. My, my number got stolen. My phone got stolen, et cetera. I want to switch my number. I want to keep my number, but put it on this SIM card. Mm -hmm. And usually this will happen with most companies after authentication. And how do they authenticate? They authenticate with your name, address, it, your birth date, et cetera. Well, a lot of those things are available a through lot Facebook. Of were exposed as well, right? <laughs> so now they can call and pretend that they're you, and now they take control of your of your phone, and they can have control of it for an hour, for two hours, for a day. You won't, mm -hmm. you won't, you will notice once you see that you have no service on your phone, and then you realize, yeah. hey, What's why am I not on? getting phone? Am I getting any text? You could be on Wi-Fi all day and not find out, yeah. right? Um, and you know once. That's that's one way that uh, you know a processor can can take control of your number, and and, and in, in many other cases, SIM numbers are changed directly by the telecom company employees that are bribed by the criminals. Mm -hmm. So there is you know from every angle there is there is an attack vector that's coming towards you. Um, when and like I said, you know to notice this, you you will you will you will see that you lost phone connection. Um, you know, data, you can't receive, you know, phone calls. Now, one of the, one of the ways that you can prevent this from happening is you need to set up a pin number that you can authenticate yourself through with the phone provider. So if somebody calls to authenticate, to do a SIM swap, then they ask for a phone number or they ask for a pin number. Yeah. Now, one of the ways that, like the way you need to, to save that pin number, because now, people you know those what we call the social engineers you can get your information or they have your information through just having access by luck to that list of phone numbers they can figure out your your your, your pin number if you use your birth year if you use your your yeah. birthday if you use your street address mm -hmm. there is a way and it's just human nature you know we are the, the pretty much the weakest link we you can't we can't blame technology all the no. time technology is here to help us be more secure so use the password manager you can use your password manager to put your pin numbers in there you can save okay i i phone you know my phone provider is verizon under verizon my pin number is such and such you can put that in your in your password manager yeah. just like you put all your other passwords that you use to log in in your email or bank account and we talked about password manager yep um so that's these are pretty much the, the you know this is pretty much the the is to be diligent always make sure that you have your phone always has uh phone company access not just wi-fi and have a password have a pin number with you with your service provider and make sure you put that pin number in a password manager yeah this concludes my talk <laughs> well on the topic when you're talking about the phone numbers in plain sight remember in 2019 facebook also had many 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 passwords in plain text on an unsecured uh, server too so okay. it seems like facebook is a very weak link in security so i would be very careful about what data i'd even trust with facebook at this point because if they can't even secure passwords and phone numbers what right. else is there going to be? Then there's the Analytica thing where millions of profiles were scraped to get targeted for different political ads or something. Right. And imagine how much data is out there now. And right. with the swim shop, shop swim, sim swapping issue is there are some providers that don't even go through those security loops like they don't even ask you what your pin number is it's like so what i would do is i would actually call up my carrier 
pretending that I'm not me and see if I'm able to go through without being asked those security questions. And if, if you do have to have security questions, I wouldn't recommend doing things like what street did I work or grew up on or what's my mother's maiden name. What I would probably do, like you said in the previous one, is just lie about those security questions like what's my mother's maiden name? Cats. What street did I work or what street did I grow up on? I don't know, blue or something silly like that that has no link to you. And creating pins and creating passwords are pretty similar too. I know with uh, Bitwarden, you can actually have it create pin numbers for you, and you can save those in your in your in your password manager. So you don't have to sit there and think, okay, what what, what number should I do? You just go in there and say, okay, generate a pin number. It spits out a pin number. You save it into your password manager, so you never have to remember it. And then you just give it to them. Say. Okay, my PIN number is XYZ, ABC, or whatever. And again, it's saved in the password manager, so you don't have to remember it. So if you're calling up them, you can you know, open up your laptop or computer or something and just look at your password manager. Okay, that's my PIN number. I'm going to put it in there, and I'm good to go. Right. Yeah. So... Um. One, one of the things I was also thinking about is adding another layer of security is use another password manager to save the password, the password for your main password manager. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Well, <laughs> Just it, it's, it's, well security is about layers. So if, right. it, <laughs> if you're willing to go through the hoops, I say go for it. I mean, why not? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's many password managers out there to choose from. Many of them are free. Yeah. And so the biggest thing is just make sure you can keep everything straight. If you can do that, then I say go for it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think that's really good this week. So I guess this concludes this week's in this in this podcast. Um, if you have any suggestions from listeners, you can go to the simplecyberdefense.com and make any suggestions of topics that are interesting in for you we always listen to to we're always open to suggestions if you have a topic that you want us to cover um, other than that we'll see you in the next episode if you like what was in this episode please consider liking subscribing and sharing with others for more information to suggest a topic or to donate head over to simplecyberdefense.com